a selfish culture, obviously, but it, it gets to the point where you almost have to wonder if people have been so indoctrinated that they're welcoming their own demise. I mean, it was so obvious from the very beginning when this pandemic started. I can actually remember talking to her when she was running for Congress and saying, we're going, we're getting shut down. Like I knew it was going to happen. And I said, it's going to be pretty, and it's going to be a lot worse than people think um, because our country can't get anything right. And we're also an extremely unhealthy country. Um, and everything's always interconnected. We don't have universal health care, and yet the fast food industry is completely subsidized. So there's a reason why, you know, the people who can afford to live in the Puget Sound region don't have to worry about not being able to eat healthy. But for those who live in, you know, the inner city of Seattle, Tacoma, and so forth, you know, they have a lot of problems regarding their options. And so everything in that respect is interconnected. And yet for some reason, they decided, okay, we're just going to take this line down, even though we know we need universal health care and universal basic income, at least for the duration of the worst parts of this pandemic. Most of the world was able to get it. We weren't. And yet today, it seems like they're still okay with that fact. They're still okay with the fact that we had the worst outcomes, you know, and it doesn't matter that you're in blue Washington or red Florida, the corporatization of our society, the corporate special interest takeover of our government couldn't be more obvious than what happened during the pandemic. Your thoughts. So um, how does how did inequality, our economic inequality, income inequality affect the pandemic? Well, it, if you take state mortality from COVID in 2020, uh, there was a very good relationship with the income inequality in those states. A study of 84 countries found the same kind of relationship, namely more unequal countries uh, did worse with the pandemic in terms of deaths. More unequal, there's less trust in more unequal countries. A lot of that kind of, uh, 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 of information is out there. So, you know, if, in a very unequal society, um, you don't trust your neighbors. You don't trust the government. I mean, levels of trust in this country have really plummeted to uh, uh, very low levels. And to recognize that that's killing us is, is really tough. What needs to be done, you know, Americans, when they uh, are challenged to recognize that another country is really doing better or doing differently, doing things differently, will rise to the challenge. I grew up in the, uh, in the Sputnik era, where the Russians launched a satellite in 1957, and it beamed a signal down to us on Earth, and, and everybody in this country was caught totally unawares. Mm -hmm. And so we were okay. And, and so what happened with that? Well, we set a goal of landing a human on the moon by the end of the 1960s. And of course we were successful. So if we recognize the need to, uh, uh, um, to rise to the challenge of what other countries can do, we can formulate a plan to do so. Australia, for example, uh, in, in 2010, it was number three in what I call the Health Olympics, the ranking of countries by life expectancy. We're about 44th, uh, according to the latest data. Anyway, the, Swedish, the Australian government uh, uh, said, what would it take to, become, to beat Japan and become the healthiest country in the world? And, and uh, you know, they formulated a plan with that goal in mind. But, you know, since everything is political and a new administration came in, they sort of set that goal aside. But suppose, uh, suppose you know, we had the State of the Union address uh, recently and it's mandated in the Constitution. Suppose the State of the Union address required us to compare the state of this union with other unions. Yeah. Suppose the president said, well, my fellow Americans, uh, we die younger than people in Thailand or Cuba or Costa Rica, but I'm sure you're fine with that. 
suppose the State of the Union really was in comparison to other unions. Maybe we'd wake up. Yeah, no, I think it's very important. And that's one of the reasons like we do this show and put information out as much as we can. I think it's incredibly important. And this, like, I don't watch the State of the Union because it's not telling me anything that I need to know. It's not telling me anything I'm going to believe that's coming out of his mouth. And it isn't anything that's important. Oh, if it was actually the, the health of the union, or at least like if he were required to do that information, I think the executive director should be required to give a report of the health of the country. And I think that, yeah, I think if that was really spelled out for people in prime time, it would be like pretty eye opening. People really think we have the best health care in the world. Yeah, you have the be- we do have the best health care in the world for the very rich. And it doesn't give, but but it doesn't give them better health, even though they're rich. That's right. That's a that's a very hard idea to get across. Uh, you know, as a medical doctor, uh, there were times when I harm people, and and a paper from Johns Hopkins in two thousand and seventeen or eighteen. Uh, Surgeons there said medical care is one of the leading causes of death in this country. Well, you think our being dead first is hard to get across, trying to get people to uh, to consider that medical care really can harm, can also help, but it can harm, um, is is really beyond the pale. Yeah. And I think something else that we don't account for, even when we're looking at that, is something that you referred to. I I, I cannot remember the phrase. It's sort of like healthy years, healthy years, quality years that you have versus total years. Because living with something chronic, you know, like explain that, because how do how do we even account for that in this country? So there's a concept called healthy life expectancy or disability adjusted life expectancy. Of the years uh, of, of the years in which you live, how much of it is uh, facing various chronic diseases, the ill effects of uh, uh, diabetes, having had a stroke, various cancers, and so on. So uh, the World Health Organization uh, uh, actually produces that number on an annual basis, and it requires a decision uh, as to uh, which disability is worse? Is it better losing a leg or losing an eye? Uh, it's a qualitative judgment, but nevertheless, we rank uh, the same or worse in healthy life expectancy as we just do in terms of uh, uh, of lifespan. So, um, you know, our medical care system does not repair people enough so that we can say that it's uh, keeping us healthy. Same thing true is true for happiness. You know, we the de- the Declaration of Independence entitles us to life, but as I pointed out, it's not a long life. Uh, entitles us to freedom, but given that we house a quarter of the world's prisoners, <laughs> that's that's in dispute, and it only it only grants us the right to pursue happiness. Remember, that's that's in the Declaration. And we certainly pursue it with a vengeance. Uh, there's a in Seattle now we have a delivery truck. You'll know uh, uh, which company it is from. It's got a blue body and they put a new sign on the side of it. Warning, contents may cause happiness. Uh. <laughs> you know what? Living in Seattle has to sometimes be one of the most disgusting. I don't I don't mean like from a from a physical sense, like just I we have a friend who's a journalist who spent a couple of weeks out there um, really um, talking to a lot of the houseless people, the home, the encampments and, and the people. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really very problematic where you are like the it's yeah. just so I, can, I I mean, disgusting in that way. I think if anybody, you know, for those who still think that this is the the issue here is that we just need to elect more Democrats, just look at Washington and California, two supermajority blue states, and it is as difficult to live there as any place in the United States, period. Yeah. um, So there's a study looking at uh, mortality rates by U.S. state 
trending from 1958 to 2017 and stratifying by whether the states had conservative uh, legislative policies or uh, liberal legislative policies. And uh, the conservative states' uh, uh, life expectancy improved till somewhere around 1980 or or so, and then it sort of flatlined. And in the more liberal states, uh, it's improved considerably more. Hawaii being, of course, uh, a right up there um, as a liberal state. And I think you're from Florida. So yeah. um, Florida is kind of a, you know, it, it it's a conservative state and there's a variety of, of policies that limit health improvements. But if you look at a map of Florida and life expectancy by county, it shows the economic gradient. You know, the worst health is up in the north where poorer people live and yep. better health is down in the south where uh, the richer folk reside. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.